This is your source for genre news, album reviews, and commentary on all things heavy. The Metal Board. Here are your hosts, Brendan Flum and George Fong. What up, guys? Welcome to the Metal Pod, episode 10. Uh, we are not doing the Josh Gomez episode because he did not get back to us uh, on email or Instagram, which is not his fault. I'm sure he's a busy guy. So yeah. that will be uh, at a future date, that episode. Um, whether he is our guest or not, we will be reviewing some of the materials he sent us. So Yeah, so, so Josh bailed on us, obviously. Um, and right after Josh bailed on us, uh, I think it was divine intervention, like I told you, Chance. Chance sent me a text out of the blue saying, when do you want to talk about Ramstein on the Metal Pod? So I was like, you know, that's perfect. We just we just lost a guest, so now we just gained one. Mr. Mr. Reliable over here, Chance. Thanks for being uh-huh. with us, man. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. It's an honor. Hell yeah, bro. Um, for people who don't know, Chance is my childhood best friend since seventh grade. Uh, he, he goes to school out in arizona at arizona state he's are you at your apartment in tempe right now yeah i'm at the condo just chilling oh yeah just been listening to uh i was cruising earlier just hanging out was listening to uh some ramstein to get ready for this podcast and uh yeah weather's great just chilling life is yeah, good fuck, fuck you the weather's not so great here um, <laughs> but yeah 75 and sunny yeah, you you lucky bastard um thank you for this for the segue though um we will be talking about all Ramstein today. Uh, our last episode was all Slipknot, and we planned on doing uh, Josh Gomez this week. But like we said, he's not with us, and Chance's favorite band of all time is Ramstein. So we're going to do another uh, just one artist episode. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get into some shirt stories. Chance, what do you got on right there? I got my Raid shirt. Um, we went to a Queen concert. Uh, Brendan and I did for one of our birthdays. I don't remember whose it was, but uh, I was at Brendan's house just chilling with him. And I was like, dude, I don't have a shirt. So I'm like, can I borrow one? He goes, sure. And he gave me this raid shirt. He's like, you'll fit in with everyone. They're not too heavy. (laughs) So I've had the shirt ever since. Yeah. You're you're looking a bit, uh, a bit big in that. So I think it, I think it sized me more than it, suited you but it worked out Maybe. and uh yeah th- i think that was for for your birthday uh yeah with you me my and my dad went to see uh queen yeah. and brian may at little caesar's and then, yeah it was sick you you roll up in your in your raid shirt so yes that's that's metal as fuck george what do you got on uh, i do not have a metal shirt today i'm running out she's my detroit lions shirt that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what's more metal than losing? So there you go. <laughs> you know, you're kind of right. <laughs> um, yeah. I got my uh, Hard Rock Cafe Edinburgh shirt on uh, from. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, from when George and I studied abroad there, obviously, a couple summers ago. And then Chance came out came out to visit. Uh, that was one hell of a week. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. So, yeah. I actually met Chance for the first time when we were in England uh yes so that was sick yeah no we had we had some uh some fun nights in edinburgh (laughs) yeah some i remember and some i don't so yes absolutely (laughs) that's the spirit and yeah i just figured you know this this shirt uh represents all three of us so had to had to bring it out for a chance appearance so oh yeah oh yeah dude i uh i remember my first one of my first impressions of george was when he brought the kilt to the premiere of a movie that was so <laughs> oh my god sick. wow yeah george, yeah you rocked yeah, the shit out of it <laughs> thanks bro i still still got the kilt and still wear it regularly so hell yeah my love to hear it yep yeah he, he had the the jonathan davis from corn look going on so there, there, was, was, some, oh. there was too many too many john davis references uh <laughs> when i when i bought that thing so Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get into some metal news before we talk about uh, Chance, your background, and some Ramstein. Um, I guess for starters, um, George, are you, are you a fan of a band called Gate Creeper? I have heard them, and of the songs I've heard, I enjoyed. Right. They're they're a newer uh, death metal band. Um, 
they dropped a EP of uh, like quarantine sessions. Um, half of it was grindcore and half of it was doom. So uh, <laughs> very, very interesting. Um, there was like nine songs that were grind that were all like a minute or less. And then one doom song that was 10 minutes. So wow. Um, yeah, that's Chance, you should, I know, I know you like listening to metal when you're at the gym. I think that's, that's a perfect album for you. You should check them out. Yes, sir. I will. Just text it to me. All right. I will do that. Um, and that Chance, I think you'll appreciate this next piece of news. Um, so Bon Scott, who was the legendary original singer of ACDC before he passed away in 1980, he was on all their 70s stuff, um, some of his unreleased music with his first band before ACDC called Fraternity, that got released uh, at the time we're recording this, it got released yesterday, so Friday the 22nd. Um, it, Like I said, it was the stuff before ACDC, so it was, and no one has heard it before, so it's pretty cool to hear him in another band. It's They're a lot different than the, the ACDC style, but it's cool to, to hear his voice in another band. Um, yeah, George, I know you're not a big classic rock guy, but uh, ACDC's 70s stuff is absolutely metal as fuck. So. Yeah, I might have to check that out. Yeah, yeah you have to. That sounds amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. The, the fraternity stuff was not... It was, it was okay. There was some good, like, bluesy rock songs, but it doesn't compare to ACDC at all. Um, Damn. Yeah, but it's it's cool to check out if you like the guy as much as I do. He, that's the only ACDC I care about, to be honest. Back in Black, I, I could give a shit. Anything after that, I don't really care, to be honest. But uh, yeah, Bon Scott, rest in peace as always, the man. Got to got to get that that Scottish represent in here. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Uh, next one uh, and last one before we move on. Um, Ghost is back, boys. I'm I'm glad to say. Um, Papa Emeritus the Fourth made his first public appearance this week uh, on like a Swedish TV show where he covered uh, the Rolling Stones' "Sympathy for the Devil." Um, it it was pretty sweet. Um, I think he made like his first concert appearance back. He had like one show before the pandemic hit back in. February or March, and then obviously they haven't done anything since, but uh, sounds like they might have a new album this year, so that'd be good. Uh, Chance, I, I know you like Ghost. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, George, I, I always get confused what your stance on Ghost is. I can't tell if you like them or not. I like them. Okay. I didn't like them. Uh, they were actually they were my first concert. That was when they were still Ghost BC. Oh, yeah, that was your first concert ever? Ghost BC was my first concert ever on the t on the stub is what it said, uh, oh, and I, I didn't like them uh, that much, uh, but I like them now. So they're cool. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Very nice. Yeah, as as you know, they they do a, like a new uh, pop up with different makeup each album cycle. Uh, the last album prequel that was um, I wasn't a huge fan of that pop up because it was Cardinal Copia instead of like yeah. a Pope. Yeah, he, he didn't have makeup on or anything, so I didn't think it was as cool. The album was really good, but uh, now there's an actual Papa back, so I think this album, this next album will be pretty kick-ass, so I'm looking forward to that. So they do, like, the Slipknot thing where they change it, like, every album cycle. Yeah, and there's, like, a different theme per album. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty neat. It's uh, definitely something different. That's why I like Ghost so much. Um, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's what we got for Metal News. Chance, you ready for some, some questions, bro? Oh, yeah. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, dude. Here we go. First one. How did you get into metal? Yeah, so way back when, when I was a little kid, my dad would play metal whenever we went to a baseball game or a football game. He would put on some Metallica, Corn, Old Kid Rock, like Ba with Taba. That was <laughs> our go-to song. I was like five or six at the time, so... That was like my first introduction. And then I really started to get into it in seventh grade when we became best friends. Um, I remember vividly going to the airport with you and your dad from our houses to the Detroit airport to go down to Tampa for spring break in seventh grade. 
And MC5 came on with Kick Out the Jams. And we went hard to that. And then uh, <laughs> Mr. Crowley came on by Ozzy. Fuck yeah. And we went hard to that too. But that was like my first vivid memory with you where we enjoyed metal together. Yeah. Um, and then coming back, I remember we jammed out to Godsmack the whole time. That was sick. And I will never forget on that trip, we had a rental car, but you, <laughs> Ford allows you to set up notifications whenever a band comes on the radio. Yeah. You were doing that in the rental car <laughs> with all I the heavy metal bands. Yeah, you had to. Of course. Oh, but yeah. Pretty much that trip was when we really got into it because we would just fucking walk on the beach and talk about metal. I was like, this kid knows all of his metal, all pop culture shit. He knows. Yeah, bro. I, I, our, our young seventh grade uh, ass is getting into metal for the first time. I mean, that's 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 it right there. Getting into metal when you're young yeah. is what it's all about. And I think I got to give your dad credit, actually, for getting me into Lamb of God. Um, yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but I was at your house one day and uh, you were like, yo, come check this out. And it was like the Redneck music video because your dad had oh, that yeah. song in his iTunes mm-hmm. library. And I was like, right. what the fuck? This is sick. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we, how old were we then? We had to be like 13 or 14. Yeah. How old were we in seventh grade? Uh, yeah, some, somewhere around there. Yeah. Shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was it was something like that. Either way. Um Holy shit, throwback. Yeah, but I love how we, even George, as me and George have talked about on the pilot, we always, every time we ask somebody that question, it's always a similar influence. Um, like, whether it be our parents or our best friends, you know, getting us into metal, so. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, Absolutely. Chance, what do you like about metal? Oh, there's a lot that I like, but I really love the community. Whenever we go to a heavy metal concert, you see, you know, normal people. And then you see fucking crazy people who are going hard in the mosh pit. But everyone's super chill. Everyone's super nice. Everyone's just there to enjoy the music. So the community aspect of it is great. And then uh, I really like how you have to listen to it loud, either at the gym, That's great. driving down the highway really fast. It has to be listened to loud or else you can't get into it. Exactly. George, is is metal why you got pulled over the other day? Because you were just going so hard you (laughs) forgot how fast you were going? (laughs) No, dude. Just a quick story. I was going 85 and that was it. So, fuck that cop. Um, (laughs) Fuck that cop. I I, I was listening to metal, but that was not the reason. So, Was it body count? No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, I can probably name what I was listening i don't remember but it was not body count unfortunately uh, but body count was definitely on after as i sped away yeah like they're they're the ultimate fuck the police metal band so yeah, yeah. I, I mean i think chance have you ever been in a car accident or got pulled over i've been pulled over once in colorado driving okay. across the country that's i was right. going 79 and a 65 and the cop is like that's way too fast for this section of highway i was like what do you mean it's not even that bad. And then he gave me a ticket. First time ever being pulled over. Uh, yeah, that sucks. I mean, I was just going to say, I've I've never been pulled over, but I've been in a car accident. And I very specifically remember the exact song and album I was listening to. It was, uh, what was it? It was, I think it was Mouth for War. And I was listening to the whole Vulgar <laughs> Display of Power album. So No way. Yeah. So. Steered you wrong. Of course. Yeah, but pun intended, right? Fuck you. I hate puns. <laughs> I've been pulled over like ten times, but I've never got a ticket. And but kind of those ten times is because my headlight was out on campus. Oh my god! Literally yeah. just because I was driving on campus and my headlight was out, and there's so much MSU PD, they were just like, mm-hmm. "Hey, you know, your headlight's out, right?" I'm like, "You're like the fifth cop that's told me that this week." Like, I'm yeah. gonna get it fixed, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. MSU police. I, I'm I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. Um, I remember I came to visit you in the middle of winter, and we got a ticket parking in that garage right outside of whatever dorm you were in, Brody. Yeah, I do remember parking that. Parking in the garage outside of Brody Kellogg. No, yeah. it, was, it was the one by Breslin, whatever that one is, that giant garage. I don't I don't know if it has a name, but 
Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I've gotten more tickets than I can count on both hands from parking illegally. Yeah, yeah. here, they give out tickets like candy here, so um, I'm not going to get into cops here at MSU, so moving on. <laughs> Chance, who are your favorite metal artists? Oh, my favorite metal artist? Well, obviously, Ramstein. They're number right. one of all time. Uh, I really like Zabbath, so. um, yeah. Korn, Slayer, and Metallica. But I listen to a lot of different stuff. But those are my main ones. Right. A lot of Pantera lately, too, in the gym. Like you said, Vulgar, oh, yeah. Display of Power. Hell yeah. It's good gym music. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. I remember... Uh... When I when I came out to see you a couple of weeks ago, you you gave me your AirPod and it was Blast and Slayer, and I was like, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, that's like. I think I told you, George, w- way in here. Um, I I would say that Rain and Blood is the ultimate workout album ever. The ultimate workout album. It's pretty fast. Yeah. I, that I, is yeah, what I, thrash I, metal shit sounds like. Off the top of my head, I'd probably agree with you, or I'd say Pantera. Yeah, yeah, or Pantera. <laughs> you, yeah. It, if you want speed or, or power, it depends on the workout. Exactly. Or Ramstein. Yeah, Ram, <laughs> Ramstein. Dude, any any metal will get the job done. So true. You know, but the thing is, I don't know if you know this, Chance. Rendon can't listen to metal when he works out. He listens to yeah, he knows. Isn't that fucking? Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro, yeah. You, you know I don't I don't put shit in my ears when I work out. Dude, he likes to take in the sounds of the gym. All, yeah. the, all the all the sweaty men grunting and lifting weights. That's what that's what motivates you. Yeah, or I, I love the women. Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh wait, Brendan, how uh, yeah. where where does Slayer lie on your like catalog of metal artists? Like top 10 yeah top 10 easily i don't know if they crack the top five maybe maybe I maybe like probably never, we never talk about slayer for how big for how much we both have listened to to them yeah um i think we're obviously going to do a whole thrash episode at some point so we'll probably take a deep dive into them at that point uh but yeah i think i mentioned on, on the pilot a little bit uh when i when i said my top 10 they're definitely my top 10 uh like I said, I don't know about top five. Uh, it's tough, man. That's like Sl- Slayer's got a soft part, soft spot in my heart because that's like my dad's favorite metal band. So, like me and them have seen them together. It like I've lost count how many times. Uh, Slayer, Slayer, and Corner are like the two bands I've seen more than any. Um, so yeah, um, Chance. I know you've obviously seen. All three of us have seen Corn together. I mean, George, you and me separately, and then Chance. Uh, we saw Corn, Corn and Rob Zombie. Oh, George, <laughs> that is that is the show. Where when I told you it was in this moment, opening for Corn, opening for Rob Zombie. Oh. And in this moment was just, I, I liked them then, and then from there it was shit. But Mike Chance, do you, that. do you do you remember seeing that band before Corn? Chance the the one with with the girl singer. Yeah, in this moment. They were hard. Yeah, dude, they were sick they that day. Up, bro. Dude, they went hard in the fucking paint. I liked them. <laughs> oh, dude, that's what I'm saying. I did too, but every time I've seen them since, they've been absolutely ass. What about Man, Chicago? They shit the bed. Yeah, they did shit the bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I <laughs> I feel like every episode I, I bring up a reason to talk shit about in this moment, so I'll just, I'll just keep <laughs> moving on. Well, you, you, I'll, I'll keep bringing up reasons to talk shit about Pantera, give and take. Hey, no, Pantera. <laughs> yeah, see, see, Chance knows what's up. Yeah, well, yeah Pantera's fantastic. They all right, f- Chance, Chance, right now, right now, on the spot, Pantera or Lamb of God? Pantera. Fuck yeah, baby. See, oh, George. That's, like, yeah. that's like your one to my six. So, no. keep them coming. No. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Oh. I didn't. I didn't even know until last week that you liked Pantera more than Slipknot. It's your fault for not listening, bro. <laughs> bro, what the fuck? I just assumed because you always talk shit about Pantera and you love Slipknot. And to you because just to you, I, I Pantera is like, yeah, I, I definitely like it more than Slipknot for sure. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. 
All right, let's. We're not going to get into it because you know we 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 fucking will. Uh, let's let's hmm. move on. Chance, what are your favorite metal subgenres? So I thought about this a lot because I don't I don't really know too many of the subgenres, mm-hmm. but I know Ramstein is industrial, and I know Corn is new. And then I really like Thrash, the big four of Thrash, right? They're pretty yeah. good. And then, as you know, Brendan, anything with heavy slow bass is great for me. Yeah, so so I know uh, Spacegrass is one of our uh, all time. Oh, yeah. So uh, you could you could say stoner uh, shit too. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. A lot of similar stuff as us. Um, thrash is just where it's at. <laughs> so good. Okay. Yeah. Um, Chance, what is the best concert you have ever seen? Oh, best concert. I go back and forth between when we saw Corn and Rob Zombie and then when we saw Sabbath the first time with our dads. Yeah. That was that was, that was sweet. That was a good night because that was the tour and then, that... Also when we snuck into Sabbath the second time. Yeah. Those, those three are the best three concerts I've been to. They're so fun. All of them. Right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh George. What'd you say? You snuck into a show? Yeah, dude, I don't know if I've told you this story, and I don't really know how, but yeah, me and Chance, it was Black Sabbath's last ever concert in Michigan, and uh, they had come earlier that year, uh, so I think we were just like, uh, you know, they just came, and, and we saw them. All right, so just just a little background. The That first one Chance is talking about when we went with our dads, that was when they reunited with Ozzy for the first time in however how many years and we were that was in 2013 so we were like 15 years old went with our dads it was mm-hmm. obviously sick as fuck because it was like their comeback tour um and then they came back a few years later uh to the palace um and that was like their part of their farewell tour i think and then they came one final time to pine knob and yeah chance me and chance were just like yeah, dude, we, we didn't have tickets. Uh, I think we sold out because, like I said, it was their, their last ever show in Michigan. So it's pretty easy to sneak into a show at Pine Knob. Because uh, it's a big field. Huh? Is it because it's, it's like a big field, right? So it's like... Kind of, yeah. You know. I mean, like like the lawn is obviously a big field and the parking lot right. is a big field. But Chance, I'll I'll let you tell the story because I think you tell it better than I do. So... <laughs> So, Brennan and I are rolling up to this concert. We have no tickets. We knew we were going to sneak in, but there's two main entrances, one by the skiing hill and then one out to the, one of the main parking lots. And in between, there's like a grass area with uh, picnic tables and restrooms and stuff like that. And then there's a waterfall that comes down. And obviously, the waterfall goes up, right? So, we snuck up to the top of the waterfall, ran across the top of it, and then we, we hopped over this 10-foot fence and suspended down just so we could fall pretty much behind a beer tent on the other side. And we snuck right in. We both fall. We start running up. And this old guy sees us fall and run up to him. And he just goes, that's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was legendary. That was a fun time sneaking in there. And the show was yeah. obviously awesome too. So Yeah. yeah. So it, was it, really, it was absolutely sick as fuck. I mean, we had to sit in like the nosebleeds, obviously, because I mean, we're not going to get in the pavilion without a ticket. Um, right. the, the lawn is just kind of free reign. But yeah, dude, that fence, that wall was big, dude. That it like it kind of hurt when we landed. And then, yeah, yeah, uh, dude, that, that guy just kind of flashed the horns at us. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he, Dude, I, I think about that a lot, actually. Like, if that guy was a dick, he could have, like, told somebody. But, like, metalheads look out for each other, so. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the community aspect of it. It's great. He knew what yes, it was sir. like to be, uh, to be a young degenerate once. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. He probably did the same shit back in the 70s. Um, but yeah. Rob Zombie, though, best visual presence at a concert ever? Maybe not the best concert, but just the visual aspect of the show is like the best ever, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. He's got the out a bunch of shit. And the floaty, yeah. uh, the floaty inflatable, like whatever the fucks that are like 10 feet tall and they just hang out. Right. And you got yeah. 
I mean, like, just John 5 is dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I, that was the big uh... yeah, Go ahead, Definitely Jeff. had a lot of charisma on stage. Yeah, he knows how to work the stage. I think that was the year um, that, uh, what album is that? Dude, he names his albums shit that, like, I can't even recite because they're so long. But whatever album it was that had uh, everybody's talking <laughs> in a UFO on it. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So funny. And tossed out those, like, inflatable aliens. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was sick. <laughs> that was sick. He brought in a UFO <laughs> and threw out the alien sex dolls. <laughs> I just love it. Yeah. Shit. Oh, dude, you're like, right, Dad. Like, shit. yeah. Um, yeah, Chance, you're right. They had like the aliens had like giant, giant fucking ox on them. <laughs> yeah, they did. It was great. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Um, Rob Zombie, he's obviously he's got some pretty sexual uh, imagery and music. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, on on that note, another band that has a lot of sexual imagery and sexual music is Ramstein. So yeah. let's get into that. Um, I think, <laughs> absolutely. Huh? I said absolutely. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, right off the bat, let's just, let's just go for it. Um, for our top five this week, we are doing our top five Ramstein songs. So, Chance, what are your top five Ramstein songs? So, funny story. I didn't have Spotify until this January after all the shit came out about the data and your top songs and all that. But Apple did a shitty version of that where they gave you a playlist of your top 100 played songs. So, that's all the info I got. But I thought it was funny because about seven of those top 10 are Ramstein songs. So I listened to America, number one. Number two was Radio. Number four of the 10 was Mind Tile. Number six was Duhast. <laughs> and then number nine was Rose Nero, if that's how you say it. And Rose then number Nero, 10 yeah. was, yeah, Rose Nero. And then uh, number 10 was Pupe. <laughs> <laughs> So, I would say, based on that, I would rate them in this order. I would go Mindtile, Radio, Deutschland, Auslander, and Sex. Okay, fair enough. Interesting um, cut. Yeah. For, I guess we should give a little um, background on Ramstein before we kind of dive into them, for those who don't know who they are, because yeah. if, someone, if someone who's who's never heard them before is listening to this right now. <laughs> and we're just, we're just talking in German right now. Um, yeah. Yes. Ram, Ramstein is an industrial metal band from Germany. Uh, they came, <laughs> that came out in the 1990s and are still one of the biggest metal bands in the world. And I think the crazy part about that is the fact that they sing strictly in German. Like they only throw in English, like very rarely. And so, sometimes, but mainly German. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's insane how a band can be that big without... Because you, you think of, like, every big music artist in the world, like, they're, Ramstein's probably the only foreign-speaking one to have that level of popularity, at least that I can think of off the top of my head. So... Yeah. Yeah, I would agree 100%. Yeah. I mean, I've never even been to Germany... I have no idea what it's like there. I have a an imagination about what it's like because I've met people from there. But the fact that they're my favorite band of all time says something about how good they are with the fucking instrument. Yeah. I, when I went to Germany, uh, everyone smoked and uh, everyone had cool shoes. So that's you, the you been to Germany? Yeah. Oh, damn. I didn't everyone know smokes, that. smokes, like, a lot. Yeah, really? I believe like, <laughs> Like ashtrays on the patio of every restaurant because people smoke when they eat. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, I, George, I don't know if you know Chance. You obviously know. Um, my my family is German, so I right. I obviously I love 
I love that aspect of Ramstein. Um, mm. and, and like you said, Chance, the fact that they that you can understand a word they're saying yet they're still <laughs> your favorite band, like that just, that just speaks to the level of uh, musicianship that they have. You know, like yeah. they're, just, they're just so damn good. Yeah, uh, they're a they're a five piece, right? Um, Six. Six piece, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of an interesting number. You don't really see that many six piece bands, I guess. Um, it works out though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're kind of. I mean, they're interesting because they have like a really good keyboardist and like DJ. So yeah, that, that adds kind of like a like a different flavor to yeah. their music. Yeah. Um, Chance, I <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but it it makes me laugh every time. I you, you say that they're your favorite band of all time because I think when I showed you them at first you hated it and and oh, now yeah. you, you love them you, so you you did hate them at first I can confirm that I hated them at first because I was being ignorant because I couldn't understand a word they were saying but then I was like fuck it I don't care anymore I, I guess I had a stigmatism against German bands for whatever reason probably because you're German but. Can you um, elaborate on that point, sir? What do you mean? Why? Because they were simply German. He what does. About... Brendan's German. He pisses me off. There, yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah, same. That's why I also don't like Krautrock. So. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, no, so, I mean... Go ahead. Krautrock. No, I was just going to say, it. so I hated them in the beginning, and then I'm pretty sure I was just cruising around, and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to put them on. And I just start, slowly started listening to them, do Haas, probably on repeat for a couple of days. And then uh, I just got into them. And I started going deeper and deeper into them. And I just started listening to them. Especially when COVID hit, dude, in 2020, in March. I would run every day and listen to Ram, like the Ramstein album on top to bottom, every day. Yep. Yeah, so I just that's, got into that's good shit, bro. Yeah, no. Yeah. So uh, um, the fact that they uh, that they sing in German is pretty interesting for uh, I'd say like most Americans, like you know, yeah. most Americans are probably are less open to more worldly music than than people in Europe. Um, right. But yeah, I I found Ramstein. Um, I, I guess I'd say in the middle of my metal listening uh, uh, part of my life when I started listening to metal. So at that point, I just couldn't understand anything at all. Anyways. <laughs> listening to like death metal and <laughs> stuff like that so the fact that i couldn't understand what they're saying didn't bother me because i mean that's like half of metal like you never understand what they're saying fully anyways usually so it was uh pretty i, I picked up on them pretty fast yeah they're good and i really i like deep yes, vocals so till lindeman he does it for me with with the, with the deep vocals so yeah till is sick and mind tile Oh, he's so good. Even on stage, but in mind tile, he goes deep. And they're weird too. They're like uh they're just weird. They have like penis cannons and like <laughs> yeah. they do like weird makeup. Um like they do like they dress up like he dresses up like a butcher, Till does. Yeah. Like blood a all lot. over and they do like costumes and weird shit, so they're cool. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Brandon, like what I was that? Either. You were telling me over break about something Till did. He set up a new business. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah. Um, Till Lindemann, their singer, uh, he came out with his own brand of dildos that are called Tildos. <laughs> Dude, that's good. Old. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's like huge. Like the, the like the like probably the, is. I, I or like know. are they like are they molded after like him, you know? I I, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't looked. <laughs> yeah, one. dude. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll I'll buy one for your birthday. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like super sexual. I mean, they made like a music video that was a porno, and you could pay to watch the uncensored version where they're literally having sex with women. Right. What? Yeah, like that ass. What song was that? I'm assuming it was sex. Oh, uh, might be. I I, I don't know though. I don't know. But 
Yeah, they are very sexual. And uh, George, we actually we had a whole episode about shock rock, and they definitely fit in that category. They're like the modern shock rock band. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, they're not. I mean, Chance, they're, I've told you this before. They're not like. I want to consider them one of my all time favorites just because for me, it's like if I can't relate to the lyrics, it's right. it's not well, as good. Okay. I mean, I still love them, obviously. Translate yeah. the lyrics for you. You can look at them. Yeah. I know. It's just when I, when I listen to it, it's like he's just screaming German at me. Yeah. Well, when you yeah. once listen to it enough, you can kind of follow it a little bit. You know, like do host me, yeah, I mean, me. and then do host me yeah. means you have me or you hate me. <laughs> yeah, I took and l- like I said, I I'm, thought it was cool. A semester? Yeah, I took a semester of German, which is also the time that I also got into Ramstein. So I was like, yeah, I'm pretty much the the Ramstein expert. Expert. Yeah, <laughs> and then I dropped it because I hated taking a foreign language that I had no interest in. So. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's. German is a very hard language to learn. Um, I, like I said, I'm my family's German, so I know a little bit, but not nearly enough to know anything that he's saying until I look it up. Um, um, Chance the the five songs that you picked for your top five. Do you know uh, what they all mean in English? No. <laughs> no. In all honesty, no. I know, like George said, do host means you have or you hate me, whatever. Um, I have no idea what mind title means. I know radio means radio. Um, pupe, I don't know what that means. I don't think it means shit, though. I'm pretty sure mind tile means my member, as in, like, a part of my body. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's my... I think it literally translates to my piece, um... And that song yeah. obviously is about cannibalism. Uh, it's oh about God. like a real German serial killer who was a cannibal. Oh, damn! See, yeah, I don't so know that's, any. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that, like I don't read that much into it. I guess that's fair. I mean, that, yeah. you know how no, that's, I am. That's totally how, how good the music is. That like you don't even have to know. Yeah. You can just listen. Yeah, yeah, just listen. That's yeah. what I always tell my buddies. I'm always like, the music just does the thinking for me. You just sit there and listen, zone out. It's great. Yeah, exactly. It, it's it's the great communicator. It's it's the language of of the world. All all that shit. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That like we said, man. You you know a band is really good when they're speaking a whole nother language and they're one of the biggest bands in the world. So they are. The 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 music is where it's at. Just uh, yeah. part of my one hot minute. Part of my one hot minute is, is about that topic, so I'll save that for later. Um, I'm gonna do my top five Ramstein songs real quick. Uh, I can't I can't do it in order because uh, you know I'm doing it in the order of how how it was released. Uh, so uh, from what's their first album called? Like Heiselfeld or some shit like that. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> Yeah, um, from that album, and I, I, I picked one one song uh, per. Like I don't I don't have two songs from the same album kind of thing. So from that album, I have "Do Rice So Good," which in English translates to "You Smell Good." Uh, so mm-hmm. that's, that's that's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, next from uh, Sane Sut, "Do Host," of course. Uh, that's like their their signature song. Um, that's that's how I got into Ramstein. Uh, w- one of those songs that I, my my dad uh, is a Ramstein fan. And he showed that to me when I was pretty young, because you know it's not it's not inappropriate if if you can't understand what they're saying, right? So right, exactly. Um, yeah, and, and the music video is pretty uh, weird, and uh, I knew I was onto something when when he showed me that for the first time. So Do Do Host is probably my favorite Ramstein song just because it has the most uh you know n- nostalgia for me um after that though from uh what song is this on I think it's from from Mudder uh Mine Hairs Brent which means my <laughs> my heart burns uh 
I just su- super symphonic. Uh, right, Ramstein likes to put. Uh, they have a keyboardist, obviously, so they they're pretty melodic in that sense. They like to add some symphonic strings here and there. Uh, so that's cool. Um, that's an interesting choice. <clears throat> Why well, do you not like it? No, it's not that I don't like it. I, I, I it's very uh, very melodic. Yeah. Um, I think. I don't know what album Fear Fry is on, but that's an honorable mention. Uh, it's not, it didn't crack my top five, but I just had to shout it out because it's probably their fastest song. Um, going in the complete opposite direction right here um, from Rise Rise uh, is the song Los, which <laughs> in English means less. Yeah, it's, it's, their, it's the only song that doesn't sound like the others, in my opinion. It's, it's acoustic, you know? So yeah, first, yeah, it sounds it's totally different. That song, yeah, is, but that song is great. I'm not, the first time yeah. you showed it to me, we were cruising down uh, to the sorority row right by Harper at MSU. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we were blasting that song. We looked like complete assholes, but it was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, good. Fuck him. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it's still heavy as hell, so they're they're dope. Um, and then from the new album, the the self titled that came out in 2019 is like like you, Chance. I, I put I put radio because it's just it's a it's a banger. <laughs> banger. <laughs> yeah. So, so those are my top five. George, what are yours? Nice. So. <clears throat> This is pretty much in order, uh, kind of. So yeah. my first one is Rise, Rise from Rise, Rise, because it's fucking awesome. Very uplifting song. Yeah. Um, my second one is also from Mutter, which is Zanne, which basically means sun in German. Um, and that ties into my trivia. So keep that in the back of your head. Um, it ties into my trivia. Huh? It ties into my trivia too, so we might we might be fucked here. We might be, yeah, we might be. Do you guys have the same question? Well, we don't know that, yet. That is that has never happened before, but this Uh-oh. might be the first time. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> After that, Zwitter, because the guitar riff is fucking nasty on that one. Yeah. Um, and then kind of a slower song, uh, Rosenrot. <clears throat> yeah. That was a song that made me want to take German, uh, even though I eventually dropped it. Um, but just the way that he sings it is so, uh, so poetic. Um, it's and then, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And then, uh, last one here I got is it's gotta be Du Hast. Uh, when you hear that little, uh, that keyboard start, you know, it's going to be like a fucking bang. It drops. Yeah. Once it drops, it's going to break your neck. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and part of the George, part of the cool thing. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Chance. I'll say that for you. Go. No, I was just going to say, George, is that your favorite riff by Ramstein? Oh, it's, it's like a popular choice. So I, I would say, no, I'd say, I'd say uh, probably Zwitter is my favorite riff. Okay. That's my fair. favorite is probably on sex. When he kicks it in at the end, it's like two thirds of the way through the song. He just goes ham. Yeah good shit yeah good dude shit. it was it was really tough for me to pick just five you know and i'm sure it was for for you guys as well because dude plus like all the song titles are in german so it's like yeah. hard to remember <laughs> which ones are good you know yeah i mean they're all great right. you know um there's also a lot of weird like weird one-offs too like yeah i don't know so yes and what i i was what I was going to say when, when you were talking about Duhast, they're like, dude, that song came out before we were born and it, it still sounds modern as hell, you know? And yeah. mm-hmm. like, they're, they're one of the few metal bands that you could throw on at like a dance club and it would, it would work, you know? Like, I don't know. I just figured, 100%. you know, with the, it does, yeah. Like with the keyboards and everything, it just kind of makes it more fun. If Duos came on in the club, I'd even start dancing. <laughs> oh yeah, bro, we'd go hard. <laughs> All right. Um so moving from favorite Ramstein songs to favorite Ramstein albums, uh 
Chance, I'm assuming your pick of the week is. I'll just I'll just let you go ahead and, and tell tell the people what your pick of the week is. Oh, you know what it is, brother. It's Ramstein by Ramstein, circa 2019. Yes, sir. Nice pick. That was yeah, top to bottom. It's my favorite album by Ramstein, and I listen to it top to bottom at least once a week. I don't know why, but since mid March of 2020, I've just can't stop listening to it nonstop. <laughs> That's kind of great. Yeah. And that was that was their first album in ten years, so I think the anticipation uh, really made it sound that much better. And I mean, it it is a, a fantastic album. So um, yeah, I, the last time I listened to an album like that was like "Dirt" by Alice in Chains, and I don't think I've really? listened to another album like like how you just said like that after. Yeah, way back when. Yeah, that's really the only album I've ever gotten this much into. That's crazy. Yeah. George, what's your pick of the week? My pick of the week is Rise, Rise, of course. Uh, I like the cover. The cover is kind of dope. It's like sheet metal orange. It, it reminds me of like, I don't know, like some like armor on like a robot or something. Um, and yeah, I just there's just a bunch of songs on there that I like. So, and the opener is cool. So, If we do happen to have the same trivia question, I'm going to uh, switch mine to something that has to do with rise rise so keep that in the back of your head brother okay <laughs> okay <laughs> well yeah you you mentioned the album cover sick my my pick of the week is i think by far the the dopest ramstein album cover and my favorite ramstein album which is i still don't even know how to pronounce it correctly to be honest with you but i think it's stain sut which is <laughs> Uh, 1997 album that that features Duhast and Angel, so many other good ones. Um, I just I think that was like, like them in their prime. Uh, they were yeah. still like a hungry hungry man before they became like the arena filling uh, like world phenomenon that they are now. I, I just I always tend to gravitate towards the 90s Ramstein stuff because it's a lot more raw. So yeah, yeah. And the, the, album, the album covers just a, a guy's face that's super fucked up. So oh, yeah, no, it's all, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's sick. Um, I think I think we're getting pretty antsy about uh, trivia here. So uh, <laughs> let's let's get into that. Uh, Chance, you wanna? Uh, do us the guest honors and, and ask us your trivia questions for us. Yes, sir. So, Brendan, this one's for you, all right? All right. When is Till Lindman's, the lead singer's, birthday? <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> when, is, when is Till's oh, birthday? Brendan. You want me to have the specific date? Well, yeah. Just the day <laughs> of the year. The day, yeah, yeah, that's the specific date. Thank you. Um, the day of the year in which Till Lindemann was born. How the fuck yeah. should I know, man? Um, I don't know. I'm that's gonna, such, a simple, I'm gonna, such a simple question, but no one has asked a question like that. Before. So that's kind of I know. Funny. Fuck you, Chance. Um, <laughs> take a guess. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's there's no way I'm gonna know that, so I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark. I think it was pretty recently. So I'm going to go with, oh, God, uh, December 23rd. Nope. Close, though. January 4th. Fuck. You weren't even that far off, kind of. Yeah. I knew it was we recently. We had a conversation about it, too. I know. Fuck, dude. <laughs> Damn, All man. right, George. What's... What up? Here's your question. The main composer's name is Christian Lorenz. What is his nickname? He's also the DJ guy. Flake. Flake. George got it. I Thank knew Brandon would Chance, know it. I didn't know if you would know it. You're such an asshole, dude. That was such a softball. <laughs> Why? Yeah. That was not a softball. That's the only two. Everyone knows. Through. Dude, that's his name. <laughs> or it's it's Flaka, right? Because that's the German way to pronounce it. I don't know. It's fucking Flake. His nickname is Flaka. 
That's a dope nickname. What's up? What up, Flocka? Hey. What up, Flocka? Dude, how the fuck am I supposed to know a guy's birthday? <laughs> well, I don't know. Can't just say you had a conversation about it? Dude, I, I don't remember that, but I'm sure we did. <laughs> All right, Chance. You, I'm, I'm, you, you swiped up on my Instagram story because I posted the Loudwire update on it. Oh, yeah. Well, because I figured, you know, you, you would appreciate some, some Ramstein. Anyways, yeah. fuck you. I, I'm, I'm about to get your ass back right here, though. Um, <laughs> All right, let's do it. Which Ramstein music video premiered on a porn website? Offlander. No. No? It's the one George talked about earlier. All right, all right. wait, chill, there. chill. All right. To, to be fair, they, they may have done multiple, but what was the first? One. What was the first one? Wasn't it? I don't know. Sex? No. Uh, that's that's what I thought, too, but it's Ik tu der we. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ik tu der we. Yeah, doesn't it mean something about wet? I maybe probably <laughs> just just log on to Pornhub later. It's on there, so <laughs> check it out. It's a trip, <laughs> bro. All right, George. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna let you ask me first because you brought it up first. Are you serious? I think okay. we, I think we right. might have the same thing. Okay. Well, I can ask you a different question, and then ask uh, Chance the question well i guess that wouldn't make sense because then you'd ask me after i'll just go well this is the question right, wait hold on hold on hold on hold on was when, when you said that earlier about like your trivia question is about sun like was that directed for me or chance that was this is your question that that question was directed towards you all right so i'll just you. ask you the question i had lined up for you okay okay <laughs> the song zone is the pronunciation was originally written as an entrance song for which boxer? Well, see, I did have the same question for you, but the only difference is I don't know the guy's name because it's Ukrainian. So Wait, I, you, you don't know it? You don't know the answer? No, he, my, my question was which Ramstein song was specifically written as the entrance song for a professional Ukrainian boxer? Well, his name is here. So uh, what is his name, sir? I don't know, dude, because it's Ukrainian and I don't give a shit about boxing. <laughs> You oh lose, my god. You lose. You lose. His name is Vitali Klitschko. Vitali oh, really? Klitschko is his name. Yeah, and he's really famous. And his brother is dating uh, Hayden Panettiere, which is an actress. So what the fuck? Fuck? Um yeah, he's a pretty dope. I'm a big boxing fan, so I, I knew this before. I knew him before I knew about Ramstein actually. So That's sick. So he would walk out to Ramstein? Um I don't think uh something they had to change something about it, but uh he was originally um it was for him, but I think something happened and it, they had to like change some of it. But damn, that's sick though. But uh, I mean, if you the song is called or he starts it off by counting from one to nine, and that's supposed to represent like when you're um when you get knocked down and you have ten seconds to get up, and then right. and then uh, the lyric is "Here comes the sun, the brightest star of them all." It's like supposed to represent his fist before he knocks you out. Like all the that's lyrics have to do with with boxing. So, um, okay. So, Chance, your trivia question is: Richard Crusp, the guitarist, lead guitarist for Ramstein, has a side band. What is the name of that band? Hmm. It's or it's his solo, his solo project. But it's it has, his solo project. But it's uh, yeah. But it it's like all all him. Hmm. Well, I don't know too many German soloists. <laughs> so, I don't know. Is it Donk you? No, it's, uh, it's an English <laughs> name. It's Emigrant. Oh, really? Yeah, the name of his band Immigrant. is Emigrant. Great, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Emigrate. Oh, Emigrate. Yeah. Okay. Emigrate. It's, it, sounds okay. like, it sounds like Ramstein without the keyboard. Really? That's sweet. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's got got some good riffs, yeah. obviously. So, and and Till obviously had uh, a side band that was just called Lindemann. I think they broke up uh, pretty recently, but yeah, um, George, I think that that is the first time that we've ever had the same trivia question for each other. Yeah. So, uh, 
since, since I did technically lose, I'm going to come up with one on the spot here. And yeah, what, what is the album cover of Rise Rise? What, what is that? Are you asking me? Yeah. Fuck. Um, I know it has like two white stripes. I don't know. Is it like a flag? Is that your answer? Sure. I'm going to say it's a Berlin flag. How about that? That's my answer. Um, you're wrong, first of all. <laughs> um, I that's, that's a good guess, though, because, I mean, I didn't even know this until today. Um, you, were, you were close earlier when you said something about sheet metal because it is the side of a German airplane. Oh. So, yeah. Wow. Makes sense. All right, that was that was an eventful trivia. So <laughs> let's wait, let's. Wait, uh, I you, don't you have to ask Chance the question? Oh, you already did. Yeah. Okay. The the about the porn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's let's uh, move on to the one hot minute. Uh, chance since you're our guest we'll let you go first all right you gotta tell me when to stop all right no you you can just just hash it out we don't really time it it's just like just you say what to, you want yeah and no, uh, no one will interrupt you until yeah. you're done pretty much Sound, sounds good so i've just been uh thinking about the state of the world quite a bit and uh th been thinking about this past summer um Summer of 2020, I was supposed to study abroad in Prague, and uh, I had made plans to go see Ramstein in Germany at some point while I was there for three months. But that all got kicked to the side because of COVID, and uh, pretty bummed out about all that. But at the same time, I get it. Shit happened. Just got to wait. Um, but at some point in my life, I really want to go see Ramstein live. Uh, and Brendan and I will be going together. George, you can come along too. Why not? Let's all go to Germany. We're going October for Oktoberfest. But uh, hell yeah. So let's uh, just stay healthy, be happy, be nice to each other, get through all this shit, and move on. I, I second that notion, brother. Third. Also. Um, yeah, Chance, I just wanted to throw in real quick. Uh, as, as George knows as well, uh, my dad and I obviously had tickets to see Ramstein in Chicago uh, this past September, um, but then the pandemic ruined that. I think you were going to try to tag along, so that that sucks. But they'll they'll be back at some point, and uh, yeah, like like you said, um, I think it's definitely a bucket list item to see Ramstein in Germany and just go mm -hmm. to Oktoberfest in general. So if they yeah. happen to fall within the a, a close period of time that would be like the ultimate uh just the ultimate experience right there oh yeah let's do it you gotta see him in germany yeah. in america because then you can listen to the song america in america <laughs> yeah where they well, just talk shit about the united states pretty much <laughs> yeah you wanna you wanna um, take your one hot yeah mine mine's kind of on the subject of uh europe so uh yeah so europe is kind of considered the uh the birthplace of heavy metal um and i i probably would have to agree with that because sabbath is from uh britain uh and uh george as you know when we went to download uh they just they i feel like they care about metal more in europe than they do here in america um there's so many great bands from so many great countries over there. Uh, whereas America, we're just one country. Uh, but Europe, there's, I don't know how many countries there's, there's a shit ton. So well, I mean, North America is like Canada and the U S right. That's what I'm saying. Like just America in general, like, I mean, cause one of the debates is like, why would I listen to European metal when I'm American? But like we, like chance was saying earlier, like, uh, tell, telling your buddies just like be open to it um mm -hmm. and i mean you, you should man just just give it a chance for those people out there who are uh 
ethnocentric, just focusing on American music. I mean, that's obviously fine because America has produced some pretty kick-ass metal. Um, but Europe is, I mean, they've got so much good shit from so many good countries. Um, but with that being said, uh, even though metal is kind of bigger in Europe, uh, I think metal in general is ultimately an American genre because even if you ask Black Sabbath, uh, they they would just consider themselves a uh, a heavy blues band, and the blues is an American genre, you know. So uh, from dating all the way back to slavery, blues kind of originated in slavery. Like slave songs became the blues. From there, it just the blues turned into rock and roll. Rock and roll influenced the Beatles. Uh, the Beatles influenced all these hard rock bands like Black Sabbath. So uh, it just went on from there. Um, yeah. So I just I just wanted to point out the fact that European metal and American metal are very closely tied to each other. So uh, there's definitely differences between the two. But uh, I love European metal. I think. I don't know if I like it more than American metal, but almost just as much. So uh, people out there try to try to listen to some European metal broaden broad your horizons. Oh yeah. I remember seeing Amana Marth with you. That was the first yeah, dude. heavy metal band from Europe that I was like, damn, these guys rock. Yeah. They're they're They killed their, their live show. Yeah. Did you see him when yeah, they had from, the, uh, George... the Loch Ness monster boat? Maybe. They had a boat. Yeah. 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 Um, we, we saw them at, at Joe Lewis when they opened for Megadeth. Uh, they, they always have a great stage show like that. Cause they're, they're, they're like Viking metal, you know? So, uh, they're, they're from Sweden. So Scandinavia, obviously, I think, I think outside of America and Britain, Sweden is my favorite metal country. Cause they just produce so, so much good shit. Um, as it should be. But yeah, George George actually cried once when he saw a Monomarth live. So it was uh, really? it was Guardians of Asgard, and uh, yeah, I was I was it, I was. Uh, was that, what day was that? Was that the second day? Uh, it definitely. Yes, was. I think it was. It was the second day. I had been through an entire day of not sitting for twelve hours, walking through yeah. deep mud because it was muddy and cold as fuck. So oh I God. kind of helped me uh, be a little bit more emotional because I was just kind of pissed off about that. And then um, yeah, Amon and Marth got me through. So Yeah, because they also had some, some pretty big uh, pyrotechnic flames. So that probably warmed you up uh, to the point of tears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unreal. I'll let, I'll let you uh, do your one hot minute okay. now. We All can right, stop yeah. talking about them on a Yeah, I don't really have much to say this week for my one hot. Um, I didn't prepare anything. So I guess I'll just touch on something that we don't really talk about too much on the show, uh, which is like the video production aspect of it. Um, obviously, you know, we, we have our guest here over Zoom because we, can't, we couldn't see him in person. Um, yeah, usually, I mean, we try our hardest to give a uh, – give the show production value. And it's, it's uh, for me, at least it's just, it's, a, it's as much about metal as it is about cinematography uh, just in, I mean, not on the show specifically, but um, in, in terms of my interests. So I just try, uh, and I, Brendan too, obviously is a film guy. So, I mean, I have a camera in my hand here, but um, yeah, I just letting you guys know that we try to make the show as uh, entertaining as possible for you guys and put a lot of production value in it. So, yeah. And, just, just going off that real quick. I mean, obviously, Zoom is never our preferred method of doing this. It's just w- with COVID, and I mean, chances have like all the way across the country right now. So I think he would have been a Zoom guest regardless. But um, mm-hmm. when when some of these guidelines do get lifted, we are gonna um, have in person guests again. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we should. Um, the next episode should be uh, in the studio. So the next time you see us, it might be in a different setting than we've ever been. So, yeah, um, that's that's a good segue right there uh, for for our song, right? Because yeah, like you said, our next episode we're hopefully gonna record it in our radio station's studio instead of your tiny little bedroom. So that yeah. might be a nice <laughs> change of scenery. Um, yep. But yeah, speak, speaking of in person guests, we are gonna have some of my other best friends from my hometown. Uh, 
tried we're gonna try to do it in person do a whole uh underground rap episode because underground rap is pretty metal um but in the meantime next week we're we're going to be focusing on non-metal artists who are metal um with the exception of underground rap because we're going to do a whole episode about that so anyone who's not underground rap or metal but that is still metal as fuck metal as fuck that is going to be the focus of our episode next week so with that being said My song wreck is Headbanger by Excision and Downlink. A uh, couple couple of uh, dubstep DJs. That song goes yeah. hard. So. Dude, I forgot about EDM when I was tr- trying to think about metal artists that aren't metal. <laughs> and EDM is like the logical extension of that. So exactly. I'm, I'm you glad. Can bang you your head. Dude, I haven't been to a rave in like nine months. I'm like itchy. <laughs> yeah, it's it really sucks um chance did you have one yeah so mine would probably have to be uh m night shambalamba by uh space jesus nice <laughs> okay nice good good to you, bro <laughs> um all right yeah. oh so, yeah mine is uh poacher's pride by nicole dollinger who we talked about a couple times on this show and yep. uh, she'll be the main topic of uh, my part of the discussion next week. She hangs out with a bunch of hardcore bands like Code Orange and uh, Attila. And Ghost Man- Mania. Ghost Mania. Yeah. She hangs out, but her she is definitely not metal. She, uh, she's like a singer-songwriter, like really slow guitar. Like, yeah. So Poacher's Pride, the lyrics are metal as fuck. So check it out. Yeah, she's obviously she's covered some Manson songs like you showed me, so she obviously likes metal. Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get into get into all that next week. Um, we're we're obviously gonna try to have uh, Josh Gomez on as soon as we can, um, but obviously we we can't just keep waiting around for him. So we're just gonna keep rolling with it until he does say something. I I emailed him a while ago. George reached out to him on Instagram. Uh, he said he was inter- interested, but uh, we can't seem to be setting anything up yet. So, like I said, we'll try to do that as soon as possible. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, keep listening to the Hours of Power on Impact 89 FM every Thursday night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, Chance, thank you so much for being our guest very last minute. I think, like I said, uh, some divine intervention, us getting together. So thank you, brother. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. It was a pleasure. Yep. Thank oh, you. yeah, bro. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah, boys. Stay metal. You've been listening to The Metal Pod, a production of Impact 89 FM. Our thanks to Impact's general manager, Jeremy Whiting, station manager, Amber Kinutsky, and programming director, McKenna Lowndes. Tune in next time for more updates on all things metal. The Metal Ball.